this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to crochet our Wapta Falls pullover. This is a granny stitch sweater that's worked from the side across. We'll make two panels and then seam it together adding a band to the bottom. The pattern includes two length options but it's very easy to customize the length so you can make it as long as you want. The yarn that I've used for this pattern is Mary Maxim Prism and this is the color Autumn Mist and I'll also be showing a sweater done in Blue Lagoon as well. You'll need two hook sizes for the pattern, a 4.5 and a 5 millimeter crochet hook, and these are Cancer Streamline hooks from Furls Crochet. So what I like to do with this pattern before I get started is choose two balls that are going to start approximately the same. So this one here goes from purple into the reds, and I like to coordinate my sleeves as I work across so that they look similar. So it's a good idea just to check out the yarn that you have to pick balls that will start the same. You can always check the center pulls as well to get two that match. Otherwise, you do need to pull off part of one to get the colors to line up. So we'll be starting at the cuff and working across. So let's start out with that smaller hook, the 4.5 millimeter and get a slip knot on our hook and you're going to begin with a chain of 13. You'll work a single, a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across so that you have a total of 12 stitches. Once you get to the end of the row, we'll chain one and turn and work single crochets through the back loop only. Now it's a good idea to count your stitches as you go, just so you stay on track with 12 stitches and you want to follow along with your pattern for the size you're working on because each size will have a different length of cuff to crochet. So we're working on the medium size and we'll need to crochet 39 rows in total. chain one and turn so you're going to repeat row two until you have 39 rows so just work single crochets through the back loop only now what I do want to mention is with this pattern it is really easy to customize your sleeve so let's take a look you may want to look at the pattern because if you are, let's say, a plus size, but you have a smaller arm, you may want to go with a smaller size arm than your bust size. So pick out the arm, look at the schematics to see what you're happy with. Because it's worked from the side across, you can choose whatever size sleeve that you want. Now, vice versa, if let's say you have a smaller bust but you have larger arms you could choose a sleeve that's a little bit bigger to better fit your arm and then work the body so this is just a way you can easily customize it because the sleeve is worked and then we work the body off the sleeve it gives you some flexibility uh, to choose whatever sleeve size you want and then the body is going to be worked across in rows so again you have flexibility to add more rows or less rows to get the size bust that you need for your body type. I'll continue now working 39 rows and then I'll meet you back up to show you the next step. So once you've worked 39 rows we're going to work across the edge in single crochet stitches. So you'll want to work one single crochet per row.
And you can see as you work across, one of the rows has more of just a little loop and then the next row is thicker and then you get back to the little loop again. So once you get all the way across, we're going to chain three. And you can change over to your larger hook at this point. Now our chain three counts as a double crochet. So that's going to count for this stitch. We're now gonna work into the next two stitches, double crochets. Chain one, skip the next stitch and work a double crochet in each of the next three. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in each of the next three. We're gonna repeat this all the way across. So now the next row is going to be an increase. We're going to chain three and a turn and we're going to make this the right side of our work. And it's always helpful to just add a marker so that you know this is the right side. As you work so we're going going to do an increase so when we increase we're going to go between these two double crochets so the first and the second we're going to work two doubles so our chain three plus our two doubles equals our first cluster we'll now chain one and then we're going to work a cluster chain one in each chain one space across. So our cluster is three double crochets. Chain one, three cluster, chain one. We'll do that all the way across. Okay, so I've worked all the way across. We're coming to the last three doubles and we're going to do that increase between the second and third. So work a cluster in between those stitches. Okay, so now let's just take a count of our clusters. So you're on track. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten clusters. This row has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven clusters for our medium size. And now our next row, we're going to chain four. Chain four counts as a double crochet and a chain one. And then we'll work a cluster chain one in each chain one space across. Okay, so now we wanna end with a chain one and a double crochet between that second double and the chain three. So now this row, we have 10 clusters and two double crochets, starting with one, ending with one. Now we're on to row four. We're going to chain three and turn, and we're going to be adding our first cluster right here. So we're going to do two double crochet, chain one, and then we're going to work cluster chain one in each chain one space across. So we'll gradually be increasing the sleeve. Okay. 
Okay, so when you get all the way across, we're going to be ending with a cluster in that last chain one space. So now you should be back to 11 clusters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And we're going to be repeating rows two, three, and four throughout increasing until you get, for this size, you wanna work up to 17 clusters. So you'll be alternating between a row of 16 clusters when you have your two doubles and 17 clusters. Work your repeat of rows two through four until you have reached your 17 clusters. Then you're just going to be repeating rows three and four until you have a total of 33 rows. So keep track of your clusters as you're working to make sure that you don't increase too much. So for the medium size, you're going to repeat rows two through four six times, and then you'll be repeating rows three and four until you have 33 rows in total, starting with that first cluster row. So again, to increase, you're going between Row stitches, chain one, cluster chain one, and then this row goes up to 12 clusters. Chain one. And then when you get to the end, you're going to be putting your cluster in between here. So I'm gonna complete my sleeve, and once I have my 33 rows, I'll meet you up and we'll work on the next step. Okay, so I've worked the sleeve. So once I reached that 17 cluster mark, I started repeating just rows three and four. And I'm ending on my 33rd row. And that is going to be a row that ends with, uh, starts with a double and ends with a double. So you should have 16 clusters across. But the previous row was the 17. Now, what we, what we need to do, because this pattern is worked from the side across, your sleeve gets folded. Okay, so what we want is our body coming down the front and the back. So how to do that, we're going to add a chain to each side of our sleeve. And we're going to do it the length that we want for the top. So you need to make sure it is in a multiple of four. So I'm gonna join back on. And I'm going to do a total of 32 and then one extra stitch for our turning chain. So I'm gonna chain on this side 33. Okay, so this one seems, it does seem short, but this is going to be a waist length and we're adding a band around the waist. So this ends up being a good length, but you can always make this longer just by adding out that multiple of four and make it as long as you want. So you could even make this a dress if you wanted to go, if you wanted to go longer. So now what we're going to do is in the second chain from the hook, First one there is a little squished, but we're gonna go into the second and we're going to work a double crochet. I'm gonna work a double crochet in the next two. Okay, and then this will be our repeat, chain one, skip one chain and double crochet in the next three. So double crochet in the next three, chain one, skip a chain, and we're gonna work this all the way across. 
Okay, so as you come across, you should be ending with one chain. I've chained one. And then you're going to work your cluster in your first space, right here across the sleeve. So cluster chain one now in each chain one space across. And I'll meet you up at the other end of the sleeve. We do need to add another chain, but I'm just working across so I can see what color that we're going to be, to, um, what color we'll be at, just so I can coordinate the color if possible. So cluster chain one, okay. So we're still working with the green. So I like to just add in from another ball. This one does have a tail that is into the green color. It's not the exact match, it's sort of the brownie green, but it's close enough. So I'm gonna put a slip knot on my hook now the pattern will state this step first. I just like to make sure I am properly color matching it. But if you're following along with the pattern, I do have you add this on so that you can continue right across the row. So I'm going to slip stitch and tighten that up. And then for this side, we only need to do the 32 chains because we don't need a turning chain. So I'm going to chain out 32. So once you've chained out 32, you can just fasten it off. And then we can continue. So we're going to add our cluster to the end. So across the sleeve, you should have 17 clusters and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is our multiple of four. Uh, four times eight is 32, so that's just a little simple math. So now as we work across this chain, we'll have another eight clusters. And we skip the first chain, chain one, skip the first chain, and then we work three double crochet in the next three. Chain one, then we skip a chain and work a double crochet in the next three. So I'm just gonna continue this along the chain. Okay, so we're going to end with our three doubles. So one, two, and sometimes that last little chain is kind of squishy, squished in there. But if you have chained out the right number, and worked across correctly, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ending with that three at the end. So now all we're going to be doing is working back and forth in rows again, following that same row three, four repeat. So this row, because it ends with the three DC, we're going to chain four, turn, and work a cluster chain one into each chain one space across.
Okay, so I've worked across, and this row has 32 clusters with our 2DC. We start and end with a double crochet. And then the previous row in total was 33. So now we're going to go back to that row that starts with the cluster. So this row will be 33 as well. So chain three, turn, and then work our two double, our two doubles in the first space. Chain one, cluster chain one across. So this is just repetitive of the pattern we've already worked through. And you're just going to keep going back and forth in rows. Follow the size that you're working on. For this size, we're going with 22 rows, and this is what it's gonna look like. So as you get into it, see we've got our sleeve, and then you're just working back and forth in rows. You can make this as wide as you want. Follow along, obviously, with the pattern for the sizes I've given, but you can tweak it. It's really easy, just make as many rows as you want. Just make sure you end on an even number because we're going to finish off the last row with just single crochet, just to finish that edge. And I want that single crochet row ending on your right side. So I don't have this one marked, but this is the right side. So we want that single crochet finishing it off on this side. So all you're going to do, I like to drop down to the smaller hook for this, is then once you finish off, I finished off on the double crochet row. So I did two single crochet, one for the chain, um, starting chain and then one for the chain one, and then a double, a single crochet in each of the doubles. So one, two, three, and then one in the chain one space, one, two, three, one in the chain one space. Just work your single crochets, you should be ending at the end then with two, one for the chain one space, one for the chain, which counts as a double. And then you can fasten that off. So this is what half, we make two of these. This is what half looks like. Okay, so what we have to do at this point is we need we're going to have to seam this together, but we're gonna leave that. We're gonna get both of our pieces done. So I know I don't have this side finished, but this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, so just picture that this is all the way across. We're gonna get it like this, and then we're going to seam the front, seam the back, and then we just have a V, okay, for our opening. So we'll lay it out, we'll lay them out flat like this. We'll mark off for a neck opening and I'm going to do a flat slip, slip stitch seam which will look really nice and we're gonna seam up the front, seam up the back. So that will be the next step once you have your two pieces complete. And then we have to do a mattress stitch to seam the sides. I like the mattress stitch because it does hide the yarn color so you don't see it and then we seam these up. Once we have that all done, we'll then finish off just by working a nice ribbed band along the bottom that's basically going to match the sleeve cuff. Okay, this is gonna be a really cute flattering pullover when we're all done, but that just gives you sort of a rundown of how the pattern's gonna work and how simple really it is to put this piece together. So I'm gonna go ahead and work up my 22 rows, finish off with a single crochet, and then we'll meet back up. I'm gonna show you how to do the seaming. Okay, so I wasn't able to finish up this sweater before we went on our trip to Banff. So you're gonna see lots of pictures of me wearing the sweater in the mountains. So I'm going to show you the finishing touches on another sweater that I started to make. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch them together with this flat slip stitch seam, which looks really nice. Now you can alter this if you want and seam it with the mattress stitch the same way that I have done the sides. But if you want this nice little look, pick a color that you'd like to pop out. Now this one here, you do notice some of the 
chain stitching on this side. So I'm gonna make this one my back and this one my front. Now also, I've done a nice V and the V is the same on the front and the back of the top. If you would prefer that you didn't have so much of a V at the back, I just suggest seaming a little bit more of it together, but I kind of like this look with the deep V on both sides. So I'm going to show you on the other sweater. I did make the other sweater also a little bit longer. This one is quite short, quite cropped. So I wanted to show you an option to make it just a little bit longer. You again can make this as long as you want, but I wanted to just give you um, some, some images with it shown a little bit longer than this one. I'll have the directions on the blog if you prefer this length, so you can check that out for what you need to chain. So what you're going to do is you're going to mark off that neck opening. I also finished this with that single crochet row after we were done our desired width. I actually made this one a little bit smaller as well. So this is a small size rather than a medium, but this step will be the same. So what you're going to do is mark off, you want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 clusters, and that's to have an even back and front. So for the other size, you're going to count up nine clusters from the bottom. So you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then mark this space right here. Do the same thing on this side. Count up nine clusters and mark. Now for the little bit extra length that I gave myself with this one, I went up a total of 12 clusters and so that I still have that 14 cluster opening the same as the other one again this one's just a little bit longer so if you've added even more clusters you just count out up as many as you need to so that you're even both on the front and back and keep that 14 cluster opening or shift one up farther if you want more of a closed back and then if we fold it this way, you can see that this is going to be the neck piece, okay? And then I do the same thing on the other piece. So we have two identical pieces. I wanna make sure I get the right side because I want, when I do this slip stitch join, I want that I have that nice stitch edge, okay? If you look at this side, you're gonna see that's gonna be harder to work. It's not as pretty looking. See this side, how you can tell the difference. Here's your stitch. You can see both loops of the stitch really easily. If you turn this way, you, you aren't seeing that nice stitch, okay? You have to turn it in order to actually see the stitch. So what we'll do is we'll just get each of our pieces. So these are our right sides are facing us. And then what you need to do, you could have all of these tails woven in ahead of time if you want. I'm gonna get my smaller hook and I'm going to get the yarn and we're going to start seaming this together. So I have two part balls. I'm going to pick, I think, the darker to do the seaming, but you could go with really any color that you want. I'm just gonna weave in my tails. I wanna get them out of the way. Another thing you can do at this stage is block your piece. Um, you can check out the schematics in the pattern. If you wanna give it a block before this stage, it's really easy at this point before it's all sewn together to lay it out and to block it. I feel like this is optional with this piece. If you don't wanna block it, it's gonna be okay. If you find your pieces aren't matching up in the, size, in the sizing, sometimes blocking can kind of fix that, but this one still turned out okay without blocking the first one I made. So I'm just gonna continue, but I'm gonna get these tails out of the way just so they don't interfere with this and then I'll meet you back up. 
Okay, so I completed the one side. Now I'm gonna do this side and show you. Again, pick the color that you want. Put a slip knot on your hook and I'm using the 4.5 millimeter. What you're going to do is come to this side. You're going to find that first stitch. You're gonna go through the back loop or the loop that's closest to your center. Then you're gonna come do the same thing on this side. So the back loop or the loop that runs into the center. Okay, and then you're just going to pull through making a slip stitch. No, this is darker yarn. Once you get the concept, all you're doing is taking your hook, you're gonna go through the back loop, the loop that's closest to the center, and over to this side, and you're just pulling through, working that slip stitch. And once you get going, it does get a little bit easier. Getting started is always the worst part. Now, if you really don't like this method, you can swap this step out for any seaming method you prefer. We're going to do mattress on the sides so that you're not seeing the yarn. Now, if you're doing this in a solid color, it really eliminates a lot of the fiddliness with the colors. So you can, the seaming doesn't matter so much, but when we're using alternating colors like this, you don't really want to see the thread you're using to seam. But I just like the look of this flat slip stitch seam, and that's why I'm choosing it, just to give that little extra detail on the front and back. So you're just going through the loops that run along this opening center, and then you just pull through with the yarn, pulling it through the loops on your hook. You also don't want to do it too tight. You don't want to distort the shape or anything. You just want it to lay nice and flat. Always make sure this yarn is running sort of up the center as you do this. This one is blending in, but if you wanted that color to pop, that seam to pop, use a lighter color. So I'm just gonna continue doing that now. Okay, working it all the way up to our markers. So once you get up to the top, make sure that your slip stitching is pretty even. I've kind of gone up to the spacing and then I like to chain one just to get things secure before I fasten off. Fasten that off. We need to weave in these tails now. So this is how it's looking. Let's take a look at this side. As you can see, this one had the lighter blue, so that does pop up. So again, if this bothers you, maybe go with um, seam it in that blue, this blue color, and that might look a little bit better. I may actually redo this one and use this color. It would just, I think, blend a little bit better, but that's just personal preference, how you finish that off. And if you do the mattress stitch, you won't even notice the seaming. 
But this I'll make my front because I like how this one looks a little bit better. So we can remove the markers. And at this point, it's another point you could block it because it can lay out nice and flat. So if you want to sh make sure that you're on track with your body measurements, the schematic measurements, you could block it at this point too. Okay, so the next step is going to be seaming the sides. You want to make sure again that we have got the right side facing. So what you'll do is make sure you've got the right sides of your sides here. What well, can be a little bit awkward to lay this out. We're going to be looking at the sides like this. So these are the right sides. You want to get your clusters all lined up. And we're going to work the mattress stitch for seaming this. Now, you can do a piece that's long enough that's going to go the whole way, or you can go to the underarm and then maybe start at the sleeve cuff and work your way up. I'm going to take a nice long tail to hopefully work through the whole thing. So at first to get started, I'm just going to get my pieces attached. I'm going to get this one secured into place. Working with a long tail can be a little bit of a pain, so if you want to work with a shorter one to the underarm, you may prefer that. And I just like to get this all secure just at the bottom. Okay, so now once you have this in place, what I'm doing for this sort of version of the mattress stitch is I'm going through, you want to go through the stitches sort of hiding your yarn. So I'm working down into the cluster. Then I'm going over to the other side, I'm doing the same thing. So I'm running my needle just through the cluster hiding the yarn. Okay, and you're just going to keep working back and forth. Across to that cluster. Just try to go evenly, like run through as much on the same on each side and then as you pull this it's going to completely hide the yarn that you're using to seam Do your best through those chain spaces to just continue to hide the yarn. And you can see it is a little bit of a nuisance with this long tail, but
Okay, and then make sure, whoops, you don't go too far before you give it a tug. Because it's having a hard time pulling back there. You have to be careful with this yarn as well because it will rip. So yeah, just make sure you tug it a little bit more as you go. But you're just going to continue working this. Now when you get to the sleeve, it looks a little bit different because we're working through, we still have the cluster row and then we have our other row that has the chain here. So this will be a little bit trickier to hide the yarn and a little bit trickier through here to hide the yarn, but you're still doing the same idea. Okay, so you just wanna complete seaming both sides and then you're going to have the sweater put together and then we will look at doing the band around the bottom. Okay, so we finished seaming together the sweater. So all the sides are done. I have all of my tails woven in as well. So here's this side. So now we're going to work the band around the bottom. Now I want this to pull in slightly and I'm going to join my yarn on to the side of the sweater. So I'm going to take my 4.5 millimeter hook, put a slip knot on the hook. We're going to join in to this side. Chain one. I'm going to single crochet. And in this, the row that has just our chain here, we're going to add two. And I'm just going to do one in the row with the cluster. So if you wanted the band not to pull in as tight, you could do two stitches here. But I want it to pull in, so I am just going to do one in that row and two in this row. So one and two, and I'm gonna work that all the way around. Okay, so I've slip stitched a join. I've worked single crochets all the way around and now we're gonna do a join as you go band. So you have flexibility here as to how wide you would like the band. I'm gonna go with a total of 12 stitches. So I'm going to chain out a total of 13. And what we're going to work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and work single crochets in each chain. It's a good idea to count because you are wanting that you have 12 stitches. So I usually count my stitches on my band as I work around just so I don't lose a stitch as I work. Okay, so I have a total of 12. We're going to skip over the first stitch. This row accounts for that stitch right here and then we're going to slip stitch into the next two and we'll crochet two more rows. So you'll have one row crocheted per stitch around. So we'll slip stitch across two, turn, You're going to skip the slip stitches that we just worked and then you're going to single crochet through the back loop only across the row so you should have 12. And once you get to the end, we'll chain one and turn, and now we'll work back down the row. So this will be our two rows for those two slip stitches we made along the edge. 
So you're making basically a ribbing working back and forth in rows, but as you work, we need to slip stitch it to the base of the sweater. So it's joining it as you go. Okay, so we've worked all the way down. Then we'll slip stitch into the next two and repeat working two rows and you're gonna keep doing this all the way around the band, the base of the sweater. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this up off camera and then I'll meet you up to seam it together. So now once you get all the way around, we're going to slip stitch the band together. So I'm going to chain one and I like to put the right sides together so the seam is to the inside. And all you're going to do is now slip stitch through each stitch. So we're going over to that starting chain and then you're slip stitching through the first stitch on this side. So slip stitch across through each stitch, joining up the band. And then once you've worked all the way, you can fasten that off. We can weave in the tail. And we'll need to weave in that starting tail as well. So just get them out of the way So once you have those complete, you can just trim and this is your completed sweater. Make sure you check the description box below the video for all of the links to the pattern and the supplies. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.